In this video, we'll discuss the product rule. The product rule is used when you want to find the derivative function of a product of two other functions. Here are the main points we'll be addressing in the video. The product rule is used to differentiate the product of two or more functions. The derivative of a product is not the product of derivatives. Here's an example of a function, h of x. That is the product of two other functions. The way I've written it, it should be pretty clear what the formulas for these two other functions. h of x is the linear function 3x minus 2, and g of x is the linear function 2x plus 1. And if I ask you to find the derivative of function h prime of x, your instinct would be to do something like that it turns out is not correct. You first think the derivative of f of x is 3, and the derivative of g is 2. Then you just multiply the derivative of f and g to get h prime of x equals 6. But unfortunately, your instinct would be wrong here. If you went through and multiply f and g, you see that h, h of x is 6x squared minus x minus 2. And the power rule tells us that the derivative of h is actually 12x minus 1, not 6. What we need is a method to quickly compute the derivative of product of two functions. This is called the product rule. The rule says if h of x is product of, product of f of x and g of x, to compute the derivative of h of x, you first multiply the derivative of g of f by f and then add the derivative of f times g. For example, in this case, we know that the derivative of f is 3 and the derivative of g is 2. So to use a product rule, we will multiply the derivative of g by f and then add the derivative of f multiplied by g. When you combine these terms, you get 12 minus 1, 12x 12 minus 1 which matches what we, what we get if we use the power rule with h of x. I'll show you a couple more examples. Here are six functions that we'll look at as examples. The first thing to do is to recognize when you can and when you cannot use a product rule. That is, when the function is made up of two other functions that are multiplied together. Take a minute to look at each of these and decide which ones you could use the product rule to compute their derivative. How about p of x? There are, a lot, there are a lot of terms here, but the parentheses can help us recognize that p of x is made up of two functions, 3x squared minus pi x plus root 2 times natural log of x. And you probably know how to compute the derivative of each one. Next, how about q of x? Not having parentheses makes it a little trickier to recognize when two functions are being multiplied. And at first, it might look like this has three terms rather than two. But you can treat three to the ex as a one function and the sine of x is another. So you can use product rule here. Next, let's look at r of x. You might think that there are two functions here, natural log and 3x minus 1. There are, but they are not being multiplied. Instead, 3x minus 1 is being used as input to the natural log function. The product rule only gets used when you're multiplying two functions. So the product does not apply here. Now let's look at s of x. You might notice that it actually is made of three functions that are multiplied together. 3x minus 2, e to the x, and sine of x. It is possible to use the product rule here if you think of e to the x times sine of x as a single function. And you know that you can find the derivative of this red function. 
although it will involve a second application of the product rule. How about t of x? At first, it looks like there are three functions being multiplied, cosine, 2x, and log base, 2 of x. However, just like r of x, the 2x here is being used as input to cosine. It's not being multiplied by cosine. So even though t of x is made up of two functions, cosine 2x and log base 2x, as in two functions, in order to use a product rule, you need to compute the derivative of cosine of 2x. Finally, let's look at u of x. You're probably looking at the square and thinking there's a little like t of x. But if we expand this expression, you can see that u of x is product of three functions cosine of x, cosine of x, and log base 2 of x. And you could use a product rule the same way you did with s of x by thinking two functions together and using the product rule second time to compute the derivative of the blue part. So we could use a product rule with all these remaining functions. However, s of x and u of x will require that you use a product rule twice each. And t of x will require something called the chain rule, which we'll look at later. So let's look at simpler functions here, p and q. I'll start by putting the product rule up right here. For both p and q, you would want to start by identifying f and the g function, then computing their derivatives. Here's a table to keep things organized. First, p of x, we know that the two functions that are being multiplied are 3x squared minus pi x plus root 2 and natural log of x. Then we need to figure out their derivatives, which are 6x minus pi and 1 over x. Next, we put this together following product rule. We multiply g prime, which is 1 over x by f, which is 3x squared minus pi x plus root 2. Then add to that f prime, which is 6x minus pi, multiplied by g, which is natural log of x. Similarly, to find the derivative of q of x, we know that two functions that are being multiplied are 3 e to the x and sine of x. Then we need to figure out their derivatives, which are 3 to the ex and cosine of x. Next, we put this together following the product rule. We multiply the g prime, which is cosine of x, by f, which is 3e to the x. Then add to that f prime, which is 3e to the x, multiplied by g, which is sine of x. And that is how we use the product rule. Now that you learn about when and how to use a product rule, you might be wondering why it works. Here's an example function h of x that is a product of two other functions, f of x and g of x. Before you learn about the product rule, if you have something like this, just like we saw earlier, your instinct to find the derivative will be compute the derivative of f, then compute the derivative of g, then multiply these derivatives together. But that as you learned, this would not be correct. Instead, compute the derivative of h of x, you would multiply the derivative of g by f, and then add to that the derivative of f multiplied by g. The question now is, why does the product rook work? Why do you need to use product rule instead of just doing what seems intuitive? Let's look at what's happening a little differently. Since multiplying two things can be thought of in terms of area, I'll describe the product rule in terms of lengths and area. So I'm going to represent f of x as a length of the one side of a rectangle, and I'll represent g of x as a length of another, another side of the rectangle. Now, h of x represents the area of this rectangle because h is length times the width, or f of x times gx. 
And then h prime of x represents high, how quickly the area of the rectangle changes as we change the value of x. Now, if we inc increase x by a tiny amount, then f of x will also change by a tiny amount. In the past, we call this delta f. And when the change in x is small enough, we write it as df. Similarly, as we increase x by a tiny amount, then g of x will also change by a tiny amount, which we'll write as dg. Next, let's think about what happens to area as we increase x by a tiny amount. As x increases, f of x changes by df, which creates a new rectang rectangular region. Since df is really small, the area of this purple rectangle is also really small. Similarly, g of x changes by dg, and this creates another new rectangular region. Since dg is really small, the area of this brown rectangle is also really small. Also, as x increases, the change in f and g creates a third new pink rectangular region. If we put all these rectangles together, we have a new larger rectangle that includes both h of x and the amount of area that has been added to the h of x when we increase x by a tiny amount. Since the area of this larger rectangle is hx plus dh, then the area of this L-shaped region represents just dh. You might, wondering, you, you might be also wondering about this tiny pink rectangle. Since both df and dj are really small, the area of this rectangle is, is so small that we're going to disregard it when we're thinking about the rate of change, which the area is increasing. Next, let's think about the area of dh. The brown rectangle has side lengths of f of x and dg. So its area is dg times f of x. The purple rectangle area has the length of df and g of x. So its area is df times g of x. And, total, and the total area of dh is sum of these areas of the brown and the purple rectangles. Now our goal is to find a way to compute the derivative function h of x. Another way to notate this derivative is dh dx. And we can get this our current equation by dividing each side by equation by dx. And then we'll need to do some algebra. First, remember that a fraction with a sum in the numerator can be rewritten as a sum of two fractions with a common denominator. And then when we have a product in the numerator of a fraction, we can rewrite it as a product of two fractions where the second fraction has a denominator of one. And then we can simply, and then we can simplify this a bit by rewriting the terms without the denominator of one. And then we have dh dx, dg dx, and df dx, which are each derivatives. So we can rewrite it. This as the derivative of h of x equal to the derivative of g of x times f of x plus derivative of f of x times g of x. So this is where the product rule comes from and why you need to use it. Because f and g interact with each other when finding the rate of change of their product.